Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm Lorenzo. Today, for the series, The Future of Our Food, we'll be talking about the new report, The State of the Food and Agriculture, that was just released. We're standing here outside of the Blue Cafe. We're about to go chit-chat with Mr. Maximo Torero, the Assistant Director General here at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Shall we? Let's go. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you, Julia. Julia from ESA. Yeah, I'm Maximo. <laughs> Great, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So the 2019 report on the state of food and agriculture was just released today. Can you tell us a bit more why this report is important? So look, the topic that the report touches is food loss and, and waste. And as we all know, it's a very important topic for FAO, for the world. Uh, why? Because we're living in a period of a lot of hunger, uh, malnutrition, and it doesn't make too much sense that we have big numbers in food losses uh, and waste. Uh, and in 2011, FAO issued a report saying that one third of the food was lost or wasted. Uh, and uh, there was a report to raise the issue and raise the importance of the issue. And what we are doing now and what we are launching uh, today is basically indicating that now it's time to have a clear definition of what we are measuring, have a clear indicator which is linked to the SDG indicators so that we can track exactly what is going on and if all the new ideas and in, in initiatives that are happening are really make sense. What do you think are the top three things, the most important things that, that, are, that are worth highlighting? So the first thing is that the report brings a number, which is the baseline number, and we are saying that 14% is the size of the losses. We are not bringing a number still on waste, because we are not ready yet, and that's a responsibility of UNEP. Can but I interrupt yes, real quick? Please. In terms of um, the economic cost, you said 14%, what does that equate to? $400 billion. Oh, okay. That's more or less the idea uh, of what it will imply. Okay. So it's the GDP of a not so small country, yeah. <laughs> basically what we are losing a year in terms of, of food. Which is a pretty important number. Yeah. But again, so so we are bringing the number. That's the first element. Uh, and the second element, I think, is that we are bringing the, the fact that to be able to tackle losses, we need to figure out where they are. And normally, the 211 report brings just the global number. We are not doing that this time. We are bringing the definition, the number, and we are trying to see where we should touch and where we should create really the innovations to reduce the hotspots of food losses in, in the world. And that's basically what we are trying uh, to do. And, and the other thing is that we normally assume that, that the policy uh, priority that I have is the same, and not necessarily. If I want to reduce emissions, we know in the report that the best way to reduce emissions is to go at the end of the chain, so basically on the waste side. Mm. Because that commodity already have gone through all this process of the value chain and has accumulated all these potential emissions. So if we are more efficient there, then in the future we'll be reducing emissions. But if I want to create more availability of food, I want to take care more of my land and my water, then the best is to tackle the problem at the losses part, which is where FAO has a huge expertise to do. And that's what we, we are trying to achieve with this report. Right now we've talked a lot about the production side, but what do you think can, can consumers per se do in practical terms to reduce their food waste? Yeah, I, I think there are many things that consumers can do. I, I think there is a lot of information that we need to share also. We need to make uh, consumers realize of the importance of not asking huge portions and then eating half of it. We also need to put incentives in place and regulation in place, like uh, restaurants, uh, retail stores, supermarkets and so on. The countries need to work on this. The US and the UK have been very progressive on this. We need to learn from those experiences, but also from experiences from other countries. For example, food banks have been successful. In, in being able to handle, but you need regulation to do that. It's not that whatever you don't need, I will take it into my food bank and then distribute it. You need to be very careful and put and have all the regulation in place. And FAO can play a good role on that because of all the normative experience we have. We can learn from practices and try to mainstream those practices. Uh, but consumers, I think, is a behavioral change issue. It's talking with them and trying to, to, to influence them. So do you think maybe including schools and involving you know, some sort of programs within schools um, to sensitize and inform um, would be and this a, is a good problem. start, perhaps? Yeah, exactly. This is a problem that you want to tackle in all the ways you can. It's not yeah. one way to go ahead. So policy makers, but, but we have to work with the youth, we have to work with the kids, we have to change behavior. Yeah. Uh, and at least in my experience, in my own personal life, my behavior is changed by my kid, no, not by any adult, but normally the, my kids will influence my behavior a lot. So we believe that that could be a way to accelerate and it could be a way to, to do it, but also fighting in all possible ways. Uh, and information sharing 
and having a tracking mechanism and having a good indicator with a clear definition, I think it's central. No? I want to end this uh, sort of Q&A that we are having with you, since we've touched up on a lot of dimensions on food waste and food loss. More broadly speaking, uh, what else would you like the audience to know about the state of food and agriculture in today, and um, especially as how we think of the future of our food? No, look, uh, what we have been mentioning in our latest report, the, the SOFI, uh, is that uh, hunger is not going down since the last three years. Uh, it's going a little bit up or staying in the same level. And that put us off path and off track. What I mean is that the, the trend should be negative. It's not negative. It should be moving even faster so that we can achieve the 2030 goal. So unless we start doing things to change that, uh, we are not, not going to achieve the goal. And forget about the goal. We are not going to reduce hunger in the world which is what we are aiming to. So, so I think losses and reduction of waste to, is a way to contribute to that. Uh, but we need to be careful. Uh, and we need to do it properly. And we need to have transparent information. And we need to bring accountability. Uh, there are too many things happening in the world, too many initiatives, but we need better accountability. And it's not accountability of FAO, it's accountability of all the players and how things are working uh, to assure that we are going to achieve what we call the put the indicator on path and on track. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.